Zero Accounting Software 2023 Bank Reconciliation Month Number One Deposits. Get ready to become an accountant hero with Zero 2023. First, a word from our sponsor. Well, actually, these are just items that we picked from the YouTube Shopping Affiliate Program, but that's actually good for you because these aren't things that were just given to us from some large corporation which we don't even use in exchange for us selling them to you. These are things that we actually researched, purchased, and used ourselves. Focusrite Scarlet Solo 3rd Gen USB Interface with Software Suite. I've been using a Focusrite for years for my audio needs, before which time I had a USB microphone which plugged directly into the computer. But I think you'll find, as I have found, if you want to increase the quality of your microphone, you will need an interface, and the Focusrite is the go-to interface as far as I'm concerned. I've been using this for years now. It works well, it's easy to use, it seems quite durably built. Because I only do the screen recordings, I only need the one solo interface. However, if you have multiple microphones you need to plug in, or if you have other instruments you need to plug in, you can look at a similar model that has more input ports. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com where we have many different courses. You can purchase one at a time or have a subscription model giving you access to all the courses. Courses which are well organized have other resources like Excel files and PDF files to download and no commercials. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage. Going into the company file we set up in a prior presentation. Get great guitars. We're going to duplicate some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab up top so we can duplicate it. Right click in the tab up top again so we can duplicate it again. Back to the tab to the middle. Accounting drop down. We want the balance sheet. This is a slightly modified balance sheet. But if you just have a normal one that will work. Tab to the right. We're going to go to the accounting drop down. We want the income statement. We're going to look at the comparative income statement here. But if you just have a normal income statement, that will work. Back to the tab to the left. Let's make a change now to the date. Just looking for January as of the end of January. Let's do a customization down below. Taking it to January, the end of it, January 31st and update. Now I'm also going to open up another report which is going to be the bank reconciliation because that's what we're working on now noting that we can actually look at the bank reconciliation report before we reconcile and see how it changes as we go through the reconciliation which is really neat I like and I've I have not seen that in other software such as uh, QuickBooks Online so it's a little bit different let's duplicate this thing again open up another uh, item accounting drop down. Let's go into the reports. I'm going to type in uh, bank reconciliation, bank reconciliation, and then let's change our date range up top. Let's bring this on a custom range, custom home on the range where the antelopes and deers run. I don't know how the song goes. I haven't sung that in a while. I'm okay. Uh, focus January to January. I'm going to say this is going to be our checking account, checking account. And then this is going to be six, one, two, four, one, eight, five, six, one, two, four, one point eight, five bank statement ending balance. And we can update it. So we saw a quick look at this last time. Uh, just noting that these outstanding items now will no longer be outstanding as we check them off as having been cleared and we'll see how the kind of report will change as we do that well these summary numbers will change and the and the balance numbers down here will change which is pretty neat i'm uh impressed by it different uh layout back to the first tab we're going to then go to the uh the accounting drop down go into our bank accounts and we're going to go into the manage accounts and then account transactions. Let's go into the account transactions here. And we want to go through our bank reconciliation process. We have our three tabs down below the uh, reconcile, 
than the bank statement. Nothing's in there on the bank statement side and the account transactions. Now notice that Zero is really uh, designed as most online accounting softwares to be connected to the bank. So it's kind of wanting us to be pulling in the transactions directly from the bank. Now, if you're not connected to the bank and you, and you wanna do the manual, uh, the manual transactions, we can mark these off as, as being reconciled, which we'll take a look at in a second, and or we can manually upload uh, a statement, which is basically uploading the, so if I go into this manually upload a statement, we're gonna then basically be uploading like the bank feed information uh, from the, the bank manually, right? So you can download bank statement from your online banking as an OFX, that's the preferred method, an OF, uh, X, a Q, I, F, a Q, B, O, which is like a bank feed uh, type of format that you can, that's often there, which is designed for, you know, QuickBooks Online, but it's really just a, a format that the bank feed data is in, which is quite common. And then you have a CSV, which is basically just a data file, which usually people open up with a spreadsheet, which is really just like a comma delimited, delimited <laughs> uh, data file, I believe. So uh, if you look at the, their, uh, their file here, just to take a look at it, uh, if you were to, to import your information from the bank, you, this, is, this is the data fields that you can, you can have. So you, you might actually try that. You can go into your bank, even if you don't have your bank feeds turned on. And so this is like a, an example of a Wells Fargo, for example. There's usually a section where you can download uh, account activity. And then when you download the activity, you can choose the date range that you want to be downloading it for. So in this case, you know, if we were doing this live uh, in, our, in our bank, we could do it just for the month of January if that's what we're working on. And then usually you have different formats, like Quicken is different than QuickBooks, so make sure that you, but the QuickBooks is that QBO file, which is quite common. This isn't an actual QuickBooks kind of file, it's a data file that formats the bank fees that you can upload to zero as well. And then this is the comma delimited, which is kind of the default. Usually if you don't have anything else, you can you could download it that way. And then you can populate your information with these headers. Now, one kind of neat thing, if you did download the data and then upload it, is that you can then add uh, the date fields, the payee and the description uh, the payee is something that you might be able to add from the description from the bank feeds. So that's just something uh, to note. So if you were to populate this, it would look something like this, right? You can actually populate something like this in Excel. Uh, notice when I opened up their file, it was actually a CSV file, not an Excel file. This is an Excel file. They look the same because both are opened in Excel. But if I if I save this file as a CSV file, when I open it back up, it'll strip all the Excel formatting, making it easy to upload to like a software like Xero. So in other words, here's my, here's my data that you would get from uh, a bank feed kind of transaction, right? You'd have the date and then check numbers. And if there was any information, then you would have the information uh, in the description line over here. And so then you've got the amounts in one column, increases being deposits, being positive number, decreases being negative numbers. And note that this is just showing you activity. It's not giving you then the beginning balance as of the beginning of the period, which is gonna be an issue when you first do that first bank reconciliation. So just note that the data that you would pull is just gonna be the data from one time period to another it's not going to include the beginning balances, which are before that point in time. You got to deal with that cutoff kind of issue. Now, if I saved this file, if I go to File, Save As, and I save it as, I can save it as an Excel file, or I can hit the drop down and save it as a CSV comma delimited file. So that allows you to use Excel to kind of format your file and then save it as a comma delimited file if you so choose. And just so you can see what that kind of looks like. If I go over here, we can see that we have the January. This is the comma delimited file. This is the bank transactions file. And if I right click on the comma delimited file and I go into my properties for it, 
I can see that it's it's not an Excel file, but a .csv file. And if I open it back up, then uh, it looks, it, it'll strip the formatting of, I can't open the two at the same time. Hold on a second. I'll close these out and then open this one up. It'll strip the formatting that it had, see? And then it just makes it like just the data. Okay, that's the, that's the idea. So, so if you needed to upload it, that's one method that you can do. We're gonna try to just record it as reconciled as uh, we go. So let's go back into here again. I'm gonna go banking, accounting, bank accounts, and then I'm gonna go back into the reconciliation. I'm gonna say, let's go into the account transactions. Okay. So now I'm on the account transactions. What I'm going to do is just go through and manually reconcile them as we go. Now, th the thing that's kind of an issue here is they don't have the reconcile button uh, up top. I think they're, they're, I've been looking here and that there's a setting that you can turn on the button, but I haven't been able to find it. So what you can do is I can go into these items and I can see the options up top and there's the mark as reconciled item, meaning you cleared it off to the bank. So it's a bit tedious of a process, but that's what we're going to use for the manual reconciliation, which will change it to unreconciled to reconcile. And then when we get to the bank feeds portion of the course, which is really what zero is really, you know, geared towards doing connecting to the bank feeds, we'll, we'll do it using the bank feeds, or you can, you can upload your information. Uh, even if you're doing it manually, like we talked, that's why I pointed that out as well. Now you can sort your data uh, here uh, by the date, right? We could, we might want to uh, sort it by the date, and and so now I can see like the older stuff first. You might sort by the description because that will put together like items next to each other, which could make it easier uh, sometimes when you're adding the information. Same with the reference, and then you might have it sorted by the spent money and the receive money here we're focusing in on the deposits so we might put you know the receive money or uh the date item here okay so now we've got the date and then uh so so let's keep it at this so now if i go to my my financial statement um this is my actual bank statement this we're imagining is from the bank itself so I have the beginning balance up top. We'll talk more about that later. We're gonna have to deal with that uh, in and of itself. That'll be that beginning balance issue. Right now we're looking at this number right here, which represents the uh, additions, the increases. Now just note that if everything is set up well within your accounting system, the reconciliation should be really easy. However, it's quite likely or common for people to kind of not have things set up well sometimes on the deposit side. What that would mean is that maybe you have your deposits kind of grouped in a way that is not exactly how they're going to be grouped on the bank statement. So if I go back onto my flow chart, this is the QuickBooks desktop flow chart, but I'm just looking at it to look at the flow of transactions. We're looking at the revenue cycle because we're looking at deposits, most deposits being, of course, from customers, hopefully, uh, and the process when they come from, when, when we get the revenue will differ dep depend on the type of industry we're in. If we're in that gig work industry, for example, we just get paid by YouTube or something, then we're gonna get the deposit and we might just record the deposit as it clears the bank. That will be very easy. We won't have any issues with that. However, if we have a situation where we're gonna have a register we're collecting money at the register, cash or some other kinds of transactions, credit cards are involved. Then if I deposit these directly into the bank, I could have issues because one, I could have fees that, that make the deposits different in amount. And two, I might be grouping the cash together and the credit cards together in such a way that when they actually physically get deposited into the bank will be different than individual sales. In other words, if I made five dollar sales all day long for cash and then i collected the cash i'm going to deposit physically into the date the bank one lump lump sum of like a hundred dollars not a bunch of different five dollar amounts and therefore when i reconcile 
if I deposit everything directly into the bank, I'm going to have the one lump sum on my bank statement, but a bunch of individual deposits in my books. And that's going to be difficult to reconcile. What do you do to clear that or fix that? You usually have that clearing account that we talked about when we did the data input. You could have a similar issue with the invoices. You have a similar issue if you have payment processors, PayPal, Stripe, and whatnot. You want to make sure that you're when they actually hit the bank account, you're grouping them in the same way in your books as will be hitting the actual bank account. Okay, and if that's the case, it should be fairly easy to, to then do the deposits and check them off as having been reconciled. Remember what's on the bank statement, you're gonna have the date of the deposit, which is usually quite relevant because the date of a deposit, if it's an electronic deposit, or even if you physically deposited it into the bank, it'll be easy for it to clear. The date will be pretty close, meaning you might put it in your books like three days before it actually clears the bank. So you might still have some outstanding deposits. You might still have timing differences, but it should be pretty close. Unlike checks, for example, where the timing difference can be quite large. And then you have the dollar amount, of course, which can help you out to reconcile. Now note that if you make physical deposits into the bank with just cash, then you're, you're not gonna have anything else like descriptions. But most of the time these days, people do electronic transfers. So if you get the money from an electronic transfer, then you might have more detail. If you have a payment processor like Stripe or something, then it might at least tell you that it came from Stripe and it might be batching things together. If it's a credit card company, it might at least tell you it came from the credit card company, right? If you're getting deposits directly from someone else, uh, some, someone else's bank transfer, then it might give you the information from who gave it to you, which would, would help you to determine if you're building your books from the bank feeds, you know, who, who gave you the money. So the, tr the electronic transfers help with the bank feeds, but if, but at the minimum, you'll have the deposit and the date, which should help us to reconcile. So note that if it's on the bank statement and not on our books, then likely we're going to have to add it to our books because likely our books are wrong unless the bank is wrong, which isn't usually the case. If it's on our books, but not on the bank, then it's not necessarily the case that anybody is wrong because we might have an outstanding item. We might know about something, a transaction that happened, which has not yet cleared the bank. That's what we're looking for. So that means that ideally, when you get used to the bank reconciliation, you always want to go from the bank to the books, because if it's on the bank side, it has to be on the book side. You don't want to go from the book to the bank, because if it's on the book side, it may not be on the bank side, right? So if you always go this way, you, you will get less confused. It sounds like you can, like it should be easy to do, but sometimes you get kind of mixed up. All right, so we're going to go over here and say that's 65,000, uh, where if I go back on over, here it is. So what I'm going to try to do to make this easy is I'm going to right click on these instead of opening them in here, and I'm going to open them in a new tab so that I can go into my transaction over here and go into my options, and I want to say, mark as reconciled mark as reconciled and then uh it is recommended that you only mark as reconciled in cases when the original bank transaction data cannot be imported and that's we're not importing the bank data so it really wants us to connect to the bank but i'm gonna say yeah i know we're gonna we're gonna do it anyways we're doing it this way so then if i i'm i'd have to refresh my data over here which is a bit tedious but now you can see it's been reconciled, right? So now it's been reconciled. If I go into my bank statement uh, information, it actually recorded it on the bank statement. Now note, it didn't record anything new. It didn't like change the balance sheet or income statement. It just now is saying, hey, look, we're recording this on the bank statement side, which is usually input when you import the data from the system into the bank statement. And we're matching that to what you had on your books. And if I go into the reconcile area, uh, it says you, you've reconciled all the transactions for this account, uh, bank statement 65,000. So this, we're not quite there yet at this point in time. All right, let's go back to the transactions tab. And then I'm gonna go back on over and say, okay, let's make that one green. 
And so this is ticking and tying it off. We're gonna say the next one is 50,000 on our one five. So here's the 50,000. Notice we did it on one two, but uh, because there's a slight timing difference, but it's pretty close, the date should be pretty close, right? So I'm gonna right click on this and open a new tab. And then I'm gonna say that it's gonna go from options, we're gonna mark as reconciled. And so we're gonna say, okay, we forced it to reconcile. And then let's update this, this one so we can see it here. So those two items are now reconciled. Now, if I go to this report to the right, the reconciliation report, and I update the reconciliation report, notice it's, it's basically changing because uh, the, outstanding, the outstanding receipts are going down because the outstanding receipts here have now been reconciled. The reconciled items are being pulled out of these outstanding receipts, the 87, 143, 35. So here's the 87, 143, 35. So we're removing those items. Let's go back to the first tab and we're gonna say, all right, we found that one make it green and then seven five seven zero eight five so seven five seven zero eight five here it is on uh on 123 and we have it here in 119 okay so let's open that in a new tab and i'm gonna say let's go ahead and hit the drop down and mark as reconcile mark as reconciled and then i'm going to say okay mark it as reconciled and then i'm going to close this back out back over here let's update it so now that one's been reconciled i'll go back on over let's make that one green and then we've got the twenty thousand five hundred twenty thousand on 124 i don't think we have that one here 20,000, oh, we do, 20,500, 20,500 uh, on, uh, uh, so let's mark that one off. Let's check that one off. So we're gonna go from here, check it off, and over here, 20,500. Uh, let's open that one up, right click, open it, and then we're gonna options and reconcile. So I'll mark as reconcile. And next time I'm thinking maybe we'll upload the bank transactions to see it that way as well. So I might actually unreconcile these and upload the bank transactions just to check that method out as well. But there we have it. Now now note that you, you can see that we might have other deposits. For example, I have d -d 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 this deposit. This deposit happened in January. It's in our books but it's not on the bank statement right so that does that mean that there's an error not necessarily because this happened at the end of the year or close to it it should have cleared you would think if it happened at, on the 25th but it's pretty close so i can check my bank books to see if it cleared in the next month of february and if it did then i should be okay right because then it cleared in february and this will simply be a timing difference so if i go into my reports over here and I update it. So then now I've got the the plus the out this one uh, less the outstanding uh, receipts at the 59,000. If I go down to the outstanding receipts, we've got this uh, 25,000, the beginning balance we have to deal with as well. And there's that 34,72,50 uh, that we'll have to deal with that will clear but as of the end of january that's the difference that's what's making up the difference between the bank and the books so we're creating our bank reconciliation report by kind of backing into and ticking tying out what's on the books and uh what's on the bank so if i go back on over here you can see we've tied we've ticked these off so we should have this number basically tied out we're still going to have to add that beginning balance in place and then we're gonna go into the decreases next time as well. Uh, I might I might try next time as well to, to upload the the Excel or CSV file that we made just to just to take take a look at the, the reconciliation process that way as well. So we'll test that out in future presentations.